Well, some big liberals have a solution to the nation's health care crisis, but this time they're not elected officials. I'm Scott Ott with Bill Whittle and Stephen Green, and this episode of Right Angles brought to you by the members at BillWhittle.com. Gentlemen, you may have seen the breaking news, the headlines, and really not much more than headlines, that Jeff Bezos, Warren Buffett, and Jamie Dimon from Amazon, Berkshire Hathaway, and J.P. Morgan, respectively, have decided to throw themselves into the troubling world of healthcare and try to find a solution to it. Now, they're coming into it not with any preconceived notions, according to them. They don't know what the solution is going to be. They're trying to ask good questions. They plan on prototyping it with their own employees at Amazon and Berkshire Hathaway companies, which, full disclosure, I am part of a Berkshire Hathaway company uh, that is my employer in my full-time job, and um, as well as J.P. Morgan. And they intend to try to ask good questions and see if they can develop something better for their own employees. And maybe if that works out well, it can become a business. But the interesting part of the business, Bill Whittle, is they say they're not going after this with a profit motive, but rather to do good for humanity. Bill Whittle, isn't that an awesome thing? Isn't it finally good that these corporate fat cats and frankly, liberal corporate fat cats are not just trying to line their own pockets, but are actually trying to help you, Mr. Citizen Whittle? You don't usually get a business proposition that begins with the statement, here's why we're going to fail spectacularly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the fact that it's going to be not-for-profit means it's going to fail. And let's just clear this up for those people out there, not our audience, obviously, they're well-educated people. Let's just clear this up for those a few stragglers out there who stumbled into this and explain why healthcare needs to be run at a profit. Running something at a profit simply means that it is able to continue the next year without support from the outside. That's all it means. It means it can continue on its own. It stands on its own two feet. It doesn't need government subsidies or tax breaks or donations or whatever. It doesn't borrow. It doesn't go into debt. It is essentially a functioning organism. And like all other organisms, they have to continue to grow and they have to continue to, to, to keep alive. If you say it's going to be a nonprofit, then you've already determined what it's going to be. It's going to be a single-payer monstrosity. I don't find Amazon, uh, Hathaway, or um, uh, who's the other? Who's the third? J.P. Who's Morgan. Be? Morgan. Yeah, these small, uh, you know, scrappy entrepreneurial businesses. These little guys out there trying all these new solutions. Please, please. I, I look. I. It hasn't happened yet, and I don't want to condemn something before it happens, but the idea that these three big companies would be trying to come up with a system to save this country's health care is alarming to me, when in point of fact, we have known for the entire history of this country how to save this country's health care system, and that is to return it what it used to be, where you had a dollar of health care come out of your pocket by your own free will and go to the doctor, instead of having a dollar taken from you by force, sent to Washington, where 33 cents are peeled off to support that standing army, then sent to the insurance companies because they have an entire myriad of, uh, of, of uh, you know, uh, minions to support. So the doctor gets 33 cents on the dollar. Aspirin costs $20 per tablet. Doctors have to do three times as many patients in order to maintain their standard of living. Doctors are, the most critical thing here is that so many doctors under the current system, they're not private businesses anymore. More and more doctors are under intense pressure to simply become part of the regional health care system yeah. or the part of the Kaiser system or whatever. And now they're employees, basically. Now they're employees. Eight o'clock, that's not my problem. It's the next guy's shift. Right? The way you solve the health care problem is the way you solve any other problem. You leave it alone and let the market do what the market does. The people on the left think that the market is some kind of, you know, some kind of magical force or some kind of fascistic sort of a, you know, a, like some kind of a selection system. It's the exact opposite. It's you idiots that are the ones that are trying to make the little magic wand selection <laughs> system. The market doesn't care. The market is a reflection of the opinion of millions and millions of people every second of the day. And if these big, big liberals just had as much respect for people as they do for automobiles, we would have a much better country here. What? <laughs> my car, as I've said many times, my car probably has a hundred different insurance options available to it. My car gets to decide whether or not it's going to have a high deductible, low deductible. My car gets to decide how much coverage it wants. My car gets to decide where the company is going to be, how much to pay, and so on. There's 200 businesses trying to get the insurance for my car. Because apparently my car can make you know, better decisions than, than I can. <laughs> but I'm, I'm allowed three choices now, right? 
coming out of this Obamacare thing. And what they really want is that I be allowed one choice. And when they allow one choice, that means that uh, one person is responsible for my health care, one entity. And if I don't like it, well, then it's time to go home with the pain meds, isn't it? Yeah. Well, Stephen Green, now that Bill Whittle is done with his anti-capitalistic <laughs> rant, I mean, come on. I mean, these are these are major American corporations that are well respected in their industries that have transformed people's lives in in many ways. Um, and by the way, uh, Berkshire Hathaway, I'm sure they do this with all their other divisions, but the part of Berkshire Hathaway that I work for, they're actually self-funding with their insurance, their, their health insurance. However, they have to have an insurance company manage it because the insurance business is such a morass of complication that they, <laughs> the Berkshire Hathaway basically says, okay, here's the money. Now you guys figure out how to work with government and everybody else <laughs> to make that happen. Um, Stephen Green, cronyism is the enemy of free markets. And what what I'm hearing here, in a sense, is when you get three major corporations um, to say, hey, we're going to try to come up with our own solution to this, how is that any better than having the other side of the crony equation, big government, uh, manage health care? I mean, do, do, aren't we going to sort of jump out of the frying pan into the fire? Well, uh, maybe, but let me let me get to the maybe part in a minute. First, uh, uh, this thing about uh, not for profit. Not for profit doesn't necessarily mean there aren't any profits. Just means there aren't any shareholders to distribute the profits to. Uh, Harvard is a nonprofit educational institution, but they've got an endowment that makes uh, Ron Jeremy look like George Costanza after he just got out of the swimming pool. I so, rest my case. Their if you're, dividends if you're are called Harvard. <laughs> if you're citing Harvard as the example of a not for profit organization. <laughs> I rest my case. And what exactly. Steve is saying is the dividends are called salaries. <laughs> that's that's right. So uh, and, and you know and this thing that uh, the, that Amazon and the rest are trying is the way it's supposed to work. Whether or not they actually succeed, this is the way it's supposed to work. Is uh, companies uh, try and experiment, they succeed or they fail, and they don't do it with any handouts. Ideally. Uh, <sighs> Obamacare, I was about to say Obamacare was the worst of both worlds, but it's the worst of about all nine realms, I think. Uh, but, the, but, but the three areas in which it really, really screwed things up is it imposed a one-size-fits-all solution on all 50 states. But, but kept each state as its own little fiefdom. So you have the disadvantages of national conformity, plus the dis, or, or, but without the advantage of having these, these 50 laboratories of democracy. So it, it was the worst of both of those worlds. And then furthermore, uh, Obamacare has this god-awful regulation that uh, corporations have to pay out uh, 80% of, uh, 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 what they pay, of what is paid into them in the form of actual treatment. And let me t the reason why that's a bad idea, even though it sounds nice, is if there's a small innovative company that figures out how to make bigger profits, they don't get to keep them. They don't get to Imagine. expand at the, uh, at, uh, at the expense of the old dinosaur companies. The like young Berkshire. competitor, yeah, has to give its profits, its extra profits, to the dinosaurs who can't cut it. So you've got, you've got no innovation. You've got a one-size-fits-all solution, and yet you've got 51 separate marketplaces where you don't get uh, you don't get the big uh, uh, benefits of these huge insurance pools. So maybe Amazon and J.P. Morgan and uh, Berkshire Hathaway can make this work. Whether or not they do, I don't care because they're being allowed to innovate, and they're not asking for my money to do it. Bill. Scotty, I, I want to say one thing. I think if you want to make this equation have some chance of working, it's actually much simpler than these big brains think it is. First of all, it's a two-step program. First of all, Chuck Berkshire Hathaway and J.P. Morgan. Just get them off the boat. Just thanks for the help. Goodbye. <laughs> and, then, and then on Amazon, you list health care like any other thing that you can buy yeah. at all. Like you can buy a video graphics card or you can buy a lawnmower. Or you can buy anything on Amazon and just let people list health care options on Amazon for every single company that's willing to do it and every single doctor's it. group and every single individual doctor. And then you get to go shopping the way you get to do everything else yeah. in your world. And that's why iPhones are driven down in cost because if it wasn't for Samsung and, and, and Google and all the rest, they'd cost $5,000 each. It's not so bloody hard. It's, it would be just like a little add-on. You'd check that little box that says, hey, you want to add the three-year protection plan to that? <laughs> it's like, yes, exactly. Yeah. Yes, I, I do. I would like I do. to add that to no, my No, I don't. Cold. Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, you know, oddly enough, when I first heard about this, um, it actually reminded me of something that I thought of years and years ago. I, I was, uh, for a short time, I was a pastor of a very small church, and somebody told me that there were uh, 40,000 Southern Baptist churches in the United States with some 16 million, at least, nominal members. And I say nominal because anybody who knows a Baptist church knows that the roles are bigger than the seat capacity. <laughs> cool. So. <laughs> that's anyway, a church. that's right. We stay. We don't kick them off the roll. But um, <laughs> but I thought at that time when back when Hillary Clinton was talking, uh, you know, the first lady of the United States was talking about um, it, how to deal with health care. I thought, you know what, S- the Southern Baptists ought to get together and say we're going to set up something to take care for starters of our own and then yeah. of the poor as well, perhaps. And we're going to de- create a demonstration project among this little nucleus of 16 million people to show that something better can be done. So actually, in that sense, I see in this corporate endeavor a possibility that there is some experimentation, maybe not on the the, the sort of federal republic model that Steve was talking about, but the idea that somebody's trying something. And so I'm, I'm reluctant to pee on that parade because I initially see something that, hey, what's the worst thing that could happen? Um, they'll, they'll come up with Don't a different idea, question. it'll fail, and we'll have some data. Now, actually, the worst thing that can happen is not that. The worst thing that can happen is that people in Congress get excited about it and decide to incentivize it. That is going to be (laughs) the ruin of it all. Because as soon as government gets involved and says, hey, we like what you're doing there, Amazon. Why don't we put a few regulations on that and give you a tax break for doing it? And next thing you know, we've got what we've got. For Bill Whittle and Stephen Green, I'm Scott Ott. Thanks to the members at BillWhittle.com for making Right Angle possible. 